Welcome to our video series for the Lighting Application Suite. And today's topic is the area of triggers and actions. And this video was already available in the past, but we are now with version 7.0 for the Lighting Application Suite. And compared to the 6.1 version, there are some changes which are now reflected in this new video. So we'll talk about triggers and actions, which are a key concept in the lighting application suite, especially in the programmer. And if you're not already familiar with triggers and action, we'll have a look at what triggers and actions are. There can be several events in the system. One event, for example, could be that one of the digital inputs of a Butler XT2 gets a signal or a MIDI device sends a MIDI message or a DALI device with a motion detector signals motion in front of the detector or simply just time or a date or an astronomical clock event. And this event sends a message to the programmer and then a trigger is created. And following the trigger there is an action. So the trigger and the action are bound together but you can limit if the trigger always creates an action by a condition. This condition limits the execution range of the trigger. And what is then following is the action. For example, to play a cue list in the programmer or to start a sequence or simply just send a network message to another peer or another system. In general, there are two groups of triggers in the programmer. And one type of trigger are triggers that are created by devices. If you go to the device manager, we have here a Butler XT2 and connected a glass touch terminal and an eBus input module. As we said before, the Butler XT has the digital dry inputs. If I double click the Butler XT, I have a settings tab here in the device manager and in the device properties with the digital inputs. I can now select a digital input and assign an action for on press and on release. On press would be the rising edge of the signal, on release would be the falling edge of the signal on the device input. So I can here now assign when the digital input gets a signal, I can select the action that is executed. And this can be a long list of possible actions. It begins with calling a macro and QList command over DALI command. I can freeze the output of the programmer. I could start a media player or stop a media player. I could also send a MIDI message over a MIDI interface connected to the server. In this case, I just select a QList command and I want to use QList number one and I want to play the QList. So when the digital input is raised, an action will be created and QList number one gets played. I could also assign an on release, for example in this case, again to use a QList command, same QList, and in this case stop. So with a rising signal on the input, the QList would start playing and with a falling edge of the signal, the QList would stop playing. I could also use, for example, the glass touch terminal. Again, double clicking and going to the settings area. I can here assign actions to the single elements of the glass touch terminal. For example, number one, I can again assign an on press or an on release action. In this case, I would say on press of this key on the terminal. I would play the media player one and can, can also select a file name and a running mode and repeat on or off. In this way I can assign triggers and actions for connected devices. The second type of trigger that can be created in the system do not come from programmer internal devices but are events that come from any other source. And to maintain and create these triggers and actions, we use the trigger list. 
In the trigger list, I can now define new triggers by add trigger rule. And here I have a list of possible triggers. For example, queue list states, DALI events, action pad events. You can even create an hourly trigger or a periodic trigger or from a serial port. In this case I use a very simple source for a trigger. I select a MIDI node that is pressed on an external MIDI device. And I can select the channel and I can select the node that causes the trigger. I can also select a condition which limits the execution of the trigger. I can create a new condition and the condition could be for example a queue list state, it could be a date or it can be the state of a device if it is online or offline or if it is visible, the state of a media player. Here I will use a time condition and I want to limit the execution of the trigger to only Monday to Friday. Now I can also select the time type and I will use once so it is only executed one time let's say at 10 o'clock in the evening and the time relation is after. So the trigger will only lead to an action if it is Monday to Friday and only once after 10 o'clock in the evening. And this is now a condition that limits the execution of the trigger. Now we need an action that is connected to the trigger. So here again I select action. And this time again I want to play a cue list. This time cue list number four. And I want to play it. So the trigger is on an external MIDI device the note C2 is pressed. The trigger will only lead to an action if this condition is met. It is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and it is after 10 o'clock in the evening. And the action that is executed play cue list number 4. Let's create a second trigger. And this time the trigger is not a MIDI note, but it is the sunrise timer. So I select the sunrise timer as a trigger. I can select again on which day the trigger is accepted, this time Monday to Friday. And the event is twilight p.m. So the sunrise timer creates from Monday to Friday a trigger at twilight p.m. I can even select an offset from this twilight. I can use the same condition to limit. I can also create a second condition which is the Butler XT2 is online. So the trigger will only cause an action in the, in the specified time and only if the Butler XT2 named DMX Out 1 is online. This time now I don't want to use a queue list, but this time I want to play the media player. I can now select the file, the playing mode and to repeat on or off. So here now the trigger is the sunrise timer Monday to Friday at twilight p.m. It is only executed if it is after 10 o'clock in the evening and only if the Butler XT2 is online and the action is play a media file. Well, let's select a media file. Let's take this one. So this is the media file that gets played. A new feature in the Lightning Application Suite 7.0 is 
that I can enable and disable triggers. I can put together triggers in a trigger group, for example, with the ID 1. And I take the same and assign the group ID 1. I can now enable and disable triggers by a single command. So I can switch on and switch off the triggers by an action that enables or disables the complete group. Let's create a trigger, not a MIDI note. I say it's um, Let's take a label. We do not define a condition here, but the action would be trigger activation. And I select the group ID 1. So now I can enable and disable a complete group of triggers in one command. That's an additional feature which is only available from the lighting application suite 7.0 and later. So this is about triggers and actions and how they are bound together and how you can control many many behavior of the programmer by external and internal devices.